Hi everyone, welcome back to our video series of case study analysis from the basic tutorial on simulation of microgrids control using MATLAB and Simulink. In our last video, we evaluated the simulation of the first case study of a microgrid operating the grid connected mode. In this video, I'm going to present a step by step overview of the second case study of a microgrid operating the grid connected mode with additional control loops. As stated in the first case, in the grid connected mode, the utility defines the network feeders, has voltage, amplitude, frequency, and phase, that are all followed by the converters controlled as network feeding. And again, network feeding converters are configured to operate equivalently as current source, acting permanently synchronized with the main grid. While in the first case we control the active and reactive power imported and exported from and to the main grid by specifying their values, in the second case a DC link and an output voltage control are added, and the active and reactive power values are generated from this voltage control approach. Therefore, the purpose of this case is to analyze this voltage control approach in which the DC link voltage control adjusts the DC voltage of the inverter to a reference value, a method that is applied in maximum power point tracker convert controls. And the output voltage control regulates the AC voltage of the inverter to a defined value. The schematic design for this case on Simulink has one DC controllable current source parallel with a DC link capacitor that replace the previous DC voltage source. This circuit represents the operation of a boost converter with a MPPT, a maximum power point tracker algorithm, which guarantees the maximum power production from the energy source by estimating a suitable value for the reference voltage VDC. The schematic design also has three-phase half-bridge IGBT switches from S1 to S6 representing a DC to AC converter that is operated by controlling the modulating signal, as well as electrical components including inverter output, inductance and resistance, filter capacitance and dumping resistance, and the line inductance and resistance. Besides one local load, measurement units of current and voltage, one AC power grid emulator and one control subsystem. Now into the control block, they are the alphabet subsystem in which a three-dimensional phaser of the measured current and voltage units are converted into a two-dimensional orthogonal phaser defined as alpha and beta. This conversion is performed using Clark transform and it is applied to simplify the analysis and control of the three-phase converter. The power and current control loop in which a modulating signal is generated in respect to the defined reference value for active and reactive power and in the alpha and beta components of the measured current and voltage values. And finally, the space vector modulation, which transforms the modulating signal given in alpha and beta components to pulses for each of the six switches of the converter. Taking a closer look at the power and current loop, we have additional voltage control approaches here, the DC link and the output voltage controls. In the DC link voltage control loop, an active power value is injected to or absorbed from the network, corresponding to the control signal produced by comparing the measured DC link voltage and the reference value with a PI compensator. And, in a similar way, in the output voltage control loop, the reactive power flow is adjusted through the control signal generated by comparing a measured output voltage to a reference value, with an integral compensator and a proportional feedback. And again, the power and control loops are implemented as detailed in the first case. From the reference values for active and reactive power and based on the converter output voltage and alpha and beta, the power control loop produces a reference current. In this current control loop, one proportional plus resonant compensator 
is applied to process and eliminate the error generated from the comparison between the reference current and the output current, producing a control signal. Based on this control signal, on a feed-forward term corresponding to the output voltage and on the DC voltage of the converter, the modulating signal to drive the space vector modulation pulse for the converter switch is generated. Now, running the simulation, we can evaluate this particular case. Here you can see the outputs. First, as in the first case, the modulating signal produces a precise response, with the alpha leading the beta component by 90 degrees. The current tracking plot, which is presenting an adequate operation of the current control loop, with the alpha current component tracking the reference current established by the power control loop. The plot of the active and reactive power as a result of the signals generated by the voltage control loops in order to achieve their reference voltage values. And here, the current and voltage phase relation plot in phase A, which results in the current leading the voltage signal by 45 degrees. Finally, the plots that demonstrate the operation of both voltage loops implemented in this study. First, the DC link voltage loop that reaches the reference value defined in the simulation, modeling the response from the operation of a MPPT algorithm. And now the output voltage control, which achieves the intended 97% of the nominal voltage. All in all, we can see that the objectives of this case study of adjusting the DC link and the output voltage were accomplished. In the next video, I will be covering an island mode simulation with primary droop control, and I look forward to have you all along too. Thank you!